Hi, welcome to this latest episode of Lightboard Lessons. And today we're going to talk about the Border Gateway Protocol. And so, what is the Border Gateway Protocol? That is BGP. And if you watched MacGyver in the 1980s, he could fix anything with duct tape and chewing gum. And so if, if DNS is the chewing gum of the internet, BGP would be the duct tape. It's kind of what holds everything together. And so, you know, we're going to do a very high level of, of what BGP is and how it works. And then, you know, leave it to the, the, um, the viewer to go out and, and discover additional details. But BGP really is a tool of internet service providers. And that's because you have all of these autonomous systems out here. And so, uh, like an AT&T or a Savvis or a CenturyLink, um, Verizon, Level 3. You have all these ASs out there, autonomous systems. I don't have the numbers memorized, so we'll just say one, two, three, and uh, let's, let's put a, a fourth one out here. And so BGP is, is the protocol, it's the routing protocol, and, and it is actually a, a, a path vector protocol okay and the way the BGP works is that you exchange uh, routing advertisements between peers so if you have routers here at the edges of all of these autonomous systems and so you could have multiple routers uh, you know say AS4 is is a, a fairly small uh, you know autonomous system maybe they just have two routers uh, but maybe in AS2, there's 150 routers in here, and AS1, there's 300, and uh, you know maybe AS3, there's 75. So you really don't know uh, from BGP's perspective how many routers are within an autonomous system because it's looking at the path. So if I have a router out here on the edge and say, you know, I'm a I'm a stub customer of AS4 and AS2, and AS4 has peering agreements uh, with um, you know, AS4 and AS2 and AS2 and, uh, and AS1 have agreements and, uh, and so on. And so say there's a, another one out here, we'll call this AS5. Uh, okay, And so they're all connected. So say you have a website out here that you want to go to and and so on your gateway router, um, in this case, this would be like maybe your mom and pop ISP or, or even say this is like a, a charter or a, a, a cable and wireless or whatever, you know, a, a smaller cable and wireless actually bought by another company. The, the ISPs are constantly changing. But um, say that, that you have your internet service, right? So you've got your little... Uh, your router at home and you subscribe up here and so you're connected into their routing infrastructure and they connect out into uh, this this big cloud uh, that we call the internet and and so if if this address exists on let's say it's on the block uh, and this is I'm just throwing a number out I have no idea whose address this is uh, so I apologize in advance um, so I have that network well the peering agreements between all of these autonomous systems is, you know, it's, and it's an it's explicit relationship. They have to define peers between their edge routers and other autonomous system routers. And so they'll define a neighbor relationship at all these, these points, and then they will decide uh, with policy and, and with configuration what routes to advertise out to the world and what routes to accept in from the world. And so the routing table can be quite small within an autonomous system, but it overall uh, throughout the world it, it, can, it can grow quite large. And I, I forget what the size is now, but I think it's somewhere around four or 500,000. It's, it's, it's really, really large. And so smaller routers to hold all of that in memory is challenging. Uh, so some, like in this case, they may just want to be uh, round robin, load balancing, outbound. Um, they may not take full routes uh, from either provider. Uh, they may take a, a partial route um, uh, out. To the internet to be able to conserve space. But anyway, back to our example, this autonomous system will advertise this route out to the world. Now they may do that as a summary route 
it might not um, go, go to the world outside of this autonomous system as a slash 24. That might be aggregated into, say, something like 125, 4.0.0, and uh, you know that's a, like a slash 20 or something like that. And so it will summarize all the routes that include this particular one as it advertises out. But as we look at the, the path uh, to this route, because of all my, my um, different connections, I get that from AS4 via AS2 via then splits out AS1 and AS3. Um, and then from AS1 could go to AS5 and then back down to AS3. Um, and so you could also just go straight to AS2 and there isn't a relationship over to AS3 from AS2, so you have to hop back up to AS1 and then down to AS3. And you might have routes also for this coming from AS5. So anyway, the, the path length uh, is one of the attributes in which BGP looks at to select the best path. So if I pick one, say that my path is um, AS2, AS1, AS3, this one. And then the other one, let's say, was AS4 to AS2 uh, to AS1 to AS3. Um, and we'll just kill that route and kill this one. So my path length is four here, and my path length is three. So if I don't have other local uh, weights or local preferences impacting the difference between these two, then the shortest path is going to win, and that's the path that I'm going to, uh, to take. Now, the, the key thing to understand about best path with BGP is that it doesn't necessarily mean it's the most performant. You could have, with a shorter path, many more router hops than a longer path. Uh, because, again, it's looking at autonomous system hops, not router hops. And so there's all kinds of metrics that some ISPs will do to look at path metrics and, and optimize routes by injecting um, uh, or, or changing policies, rather, uh, that will influence uh, the direction of, of traffic to meet uh, customer SLAs or, or provide uh, additional services. So there, there is a very complex... Uh, 10 to 12, depending on how many like sub attributes that you go in in the uh, BGP routing, um, the uh, decision algorithm. And so I'll, I'll leave it to you to, to go out and look at that. Um, but in a nutshell, th this is how the internet works. And, and these, uh, before we leave, um, these relationships between uh, ISPs, it's, it's really built on trust. And so I tell you that I'm going to advertise routes, you tell me you're going to advertise routes to me, and if I don't put controls in there to block routes that I don't want to receive, like, like um, you know, RFC uh, 1918 type routes, there's nothing preventing you from a routing perspective from sending them to me, uh, but you know, obviously you're not supposed to uh, share uh, private address space. And, and then you also have the uh, additional concerns of uh, potentially taking your IGP and re-injecting it into your EGP in a way that might make one particular router on the internet look like the best path for everybody. That's happened in the past and brought the router or brought the internet to its knees. So trust is, is a big deal uh, between all these ISPs and how they exchange routes. And there's so much more that we could go into BGP, uh, but I'll, I'll leave you with that. And um, you know, BGP is supported on the big IP. You can get it through a, th a third-party module that, uh, that we have in the, the Zeb OS uh, that, you can, that you can license. And uh, there's a lot of neat things that you can do on the big IP with, uh, with BGP. So thank you for joining us. Uh, we'll see you out there in the community. And make sure you subscribe. We'll see you later.